So some terms that you should know. Misinformation versus disinformation versus malinformation. Misinformation is false information that is spread regardless of whether there is intent to mislead. Disinformation, deliberately misleading or biased information, manipulated narrative or facts. Propaganda. And malinformation, genuine information that is shared to cause harm. How do you know if a news story is true? If I agree with it. So with misinformation, this is unintentional mistakes, such as inaccurate photo captions, dates, stats, translations, or when satire is taken seriously, spreading false information that you think is true. With disinformation, this is fabricated and is deliberately manipulated. Its intent is to create conspiracy theories or rumors. And malinformation deliberate abuse of private information with the intent to harm or intimidate. For example, sharing someone's personal emails online. While this is not false information, it is distributed with malign intent. Imagine a small village called Fernville that has residents, a government, and a newspaper. For generations, the newspaper was a trusted source of information with both good news and bad. At the edge of town, a river separates Fernville from Treetown, the next town over. Fernville residents wanted a bridge over the river, while Treetown residents were against it. The bridge became a subject of debate, and a decision needed to be made about building it. Normally, this kind of decision would be based on a shared understanding of the facts, like construction costs and timelines that were published in the paper. The facts gave everyone a foundation for forming their own opinions about the bridge. In the past, issues between towns were settled between town leaders in public meetings. This time, however, a few government leaders of Treetown who were against the bridge took a different approach. Instead of meetings and diplomacy, they decided to fool Fernville residents into rejecting the bridge. They created and distributed official-looking articles, documents, and advertisements that all had the same message. The bridge will cost three times what the estimates say. Leaders in Treetown repeated the same message in interviews and meetings. This information became widely shared in Fernville because it was surprising and provocative. But in reality... The messages were lies and exaggerations about the bridge's cost. This fooled Fernville residents, who trusted this new information like articles in their newspaper. It seemed so real to them. Soon, the citizens of Fernville decided against the bridge, and Treetown residents celebrated. They successfully manipulated Fernville into rejecting the bridge by spreading false information. This is called a disinformation campaign. Disinformation is false information that is published and shared with the goal to deceive people and cause them to support a particular person, issue, or organization that they may not otherwise support. The problem is that disinformation is based on lies and manipulation of facts. It causes people to lose trust in newspapers who report the information needed to make sound decisions. As in the bridge example, it can mean one town or country can unfairly control another and cause them to vote against their own interests. Today, disinformation is growing and becoming more difficult to detect. To avoid spreading it, use information from trustworthy sources like respected newspapers, journals, and well-known journalists. If the information seems misleading, research the writer and publisher and look for bias. Be skeptical of messages that seem exaggerated or provocative. By learning to detect and avoid disinformation, we can prevent others from unfairly manipulating our opinions and help facts and trusted information rise to the surface. Alternative facts. A phrase used by U.S. Counselor to the President Kellyanne Conway during a Meet the Press interview on January 22, 2017, in which she defended White House Press Secretary 
Sean Spicer's false statement about the attendance numbers of Donald Trump's inauguration as President of the United States. And you did not answer the question. I did, you did answer no, your you question. No, you did not. You did yes, not I answer did. the question of why the president asked the White House press secretary to come out in front of the podium for the first time and utter a falsehood. Why did he do that? It undermines the credibility of the entire White House press office no, it on doesn't. day don't one. Be so, don't be so overly dramatic about it, Chuck. What it, it, you're saying it's a falsehood, and they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. But the point remains Wait a minute. Alternative that there's... Facts? Alternative facts, four of the five facts he uttered. The hey, one Chuck, thing he why, got hey, right Chuck... was Zeke Miller. Four of the five facts he uttered were just not true. Look, alternative facts are not facts. They're falsehoods. Clickbait. On the Internet. It's content whose main purpose is to attract attention and encourage visitors to click on a link to a particular web page. Was Amelia Earhart eaten by coconut crabs? Should you start drinking baking soda for weight loss? Why are teachers striking? The answer may surprise you. This outrageous truth about green gummy bears will destroy your world. And my favorite, he thought it was Bigfoot's skull, but then experts told him this. These are all examples of clickbait. The purpose is to grab your attention with an outrageous headline and photograph in the hopes that you will click on it. There's an organization out there called Stop Clickbait, and they are a company run by 70 people from around the world, and they go through this plague of clickbait so that you don't have to. So all the clickbait that's out there, they go through that, they filter it, and they come back to you with the answers so you don't have to suffer through all of this. You can follow Stop Clickbait on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So was Amelia Earhart eaten by coconut crabs? No. Should you stop drinking baking soda for weight loss? No. Why are teachers striking? The answer may surprise you. Not really. Uh, they're striking because they feel like they're being underpaid. The truth about green gummy bears will not destroy your world because there's nothing unique about it. And my favorite, this is not Bigfoot skull. It is just a giant rock. Another term you should be familiar with is wiki. A wiki is a website that allows collaborative editing of its content and structure by its users. A wiki is a clickable online publication collaboratively edited and managed by its own audience directly using a web browser. Wikipedia, by far one of the most popular websites on the internet. Wikipedia is an online free content encyclopedia project helping to create a world in which everyone can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. It is supported by the nonprofit Wikimedia Foundation and based on a model of openly editable content. You've probably seen encyclopedias. Whether you're settling an argument or researching a school project, these books can hold the answers. These days, though, the world moves so fast, it's hard for books that were written months or years ago to keep up. Thankfully, we have a new kind of encyclopedia that's online, free, built by thousands of people, and changes every day. The idea that thousands of volunteers could create an online encyclopedia doesn't sound possible. But thanks to new technology and specific policies, Wikipedia has become one of the top five sites on the web. The site is run by a not-for-profit foundation with a goal to provide everyone on the planet access to the sum of all human knowledge. To see how it works, let's get started with the wiki in Wikipedia. A wiki is a kind of website that allows users to make changes to any page. They simply click Edit, make the change, and then save the page to share it with the world. This basic concept allows volunteers to contribute information on any subject in Wikipedia. And because Wikipedia is a website, 
there is no limit to the number of topics it can cover. Being a wiki means that Wikipedia is always changing. When someone notable passes away, Wikipedia is updated. When news breaks, Wikipedia grows. It all works because tens of thousands of volunteers contribute and also enforce rules to ensure Wikipedia remains a reliable source for factual information. These users, like any member, can see changes as they happen on each article. For example, if someone posts an advertisement on Wikipedia, which is forbidden, volunteers can easily reverse the change to maintain the article's integrity. This means every change to Wikipedia is reviewed and must abide by two big rules. The first is verifiability, which is necessary to ensure high quality. For this reason, Wikipedia articles must rely on information from published sources like books or newspapers, resources known for fact-checking. Requiring contributors to cite these resources in articles and quotations ensures Wikipedia articles are factual and high quality. If it's not verified, it can't be in Wikipedia. For example, you can write that the U.S. unemployment rate in 1935 was 20.1%, but you must also cite its source for it to remain in Wikipedia. In this case, numerous history books could be verifiable resources. The second rule requires a neutral point of view. All Wikipedia material must be presented fairly and without bias, just like any other encyclopedia. This means Wikipedia is not a place for contributors to share their own opinions. Let's say you're an advocate for vaccinations, and you write, Every parent should get their children vaccinated. Unfortunately, this is biased and certain to cause disagreement. However, published opinions of experts can be included. For example, writing that vaccinating all U.S. children saves an estimated 33,000 lives and citing a reputable source is a statement of fact that can be verified. And if there is an opposing view, it should also be included to balance the article and keep it neutral. The article should present all the major opinions without endorsing one over the other. It's these two rules and the volunteers who uphold them that make Wikipedia a reliable resource that grows each day. And you can be involved. It's all part of the process of building a free encyclopedia, the largest encyclopedia in human history. Bot. An internet bot, web robot, robot, or simply a bot, is a software application that runs automated tasks over the internet. Typically, bots perform tasks that are simple and repetitive, much faster than a person. A perfect example of a bot is when you use your smartphone's built-in voice activation service, like on the iPhone, Siri, or when you say, hey Google, and then you ask a question, or maybe you have an Amazon Alexa at home. These are great examples of bots. When you ask a question to one of these features, it provides back to you a simple answer. But if you were to ask them a more complicated question, chances are that bot can't answer that question. Next is a really good video that explains what bots are and why it's important that you're aware of them. What is a bot? Put simply, bots are computer programs you typically interact with through written or spoken language that are meant to make your life a little easier. They take mundane tasks off your plate, such as reminding you to take an umbrella if it's going to rain or to call your mom on her birthday. They can also take over other needlessly frustrating things like booking travel, remembering to pay your bills, or other communications that used to be relegated to annoying automated phone operators. Given the increasing trend of texting as a primary form of communication, these bots are infiltrating many fields such as customer service, banking, and healthcare. You may soon find that you're chatting with bots more often than your best friends. But bots are nothing new and date back to the early beginnings of computing. The earliest chatbot was programmed at MIT in 1964. Its name was Eliza and it simplistically simulated a chat with a psychiatrist. Today, there are a wide array of high-powered bots, such as Apple's Siri, IBM's Watson, Amazon's Alexa, and Microsoft's Cortana. While these bots are the best of the best and run on cutting-edge artificial intelligence programming, the ones you're likely going to chat with inside Messenger apps will be much simpler. So how do these bots work? 
All bots require input from the user. How they respond to that information depends on their complexity. Chatbots typically scan text looking for phrases or words that the bot is programmed to recognize and respond to accordingly. These bots are fairly simple and can be easily derailed by statements made out of context or common human errors, such as unusual sentence structure or spelling mistakes. Learning natural language is tough work, whether you're a baby or a bot, and it takes time for the chatbots to become fully conversational and recognize online shorthand. Some bots even take the easy road, offering only a limited number of responses to choose from. Smarter bots use a more sophisticated natural language processing system and are much better at identifying the different elements in a sentence and understanding how they relate. Some of these smarter bots can even learn from their interactions with people. The more communication they have with users, the more natural their chat interactions become. Come. The most sophisticated bots can also learn from social media interactions, news articles, or other text-based stories in an attempt to learn context, history, and ethics. So when will these bots become my new best friend? Whether we're talking about complex AIs or simple bots that just tell you the weather, chatbots are foreseen as the future of how we use our phone, especially as they become a bigger part of the world's most popular messenger apps. If you've tried talking to one of these chatbots, you may have discovered that they're currently pretty poor conversationalists. As you can imagine, building a truly successful chatbot is as difficult as trying to compile all of human history into a simple book. So it's not likely that these bots will be replacing a living, breathing, and most importantly, thinking human being anytime soon. But with billions of users spending more and more time on messenger apps, the only thing that's certain is that the bots are coming. What is a Russian bot or a Russian troll or a Kremlin bot or a troll factory? These are state-sponsored anonymous internet political commentators and trolls linked to the Russian government. These Russian bots infested different social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter and produced false information and false narrative and false articles surrounding the time leading up to, during, and after the election. Conspiracy theory. A belief that some covert but influential person or organization is responsible for a circumstance or event. Conspiracy theory is an explanation for an event or situation that evokes a conspiracy, often political in motivation, when other explanations are more probable. Donald Trump built his political career on a conspiracy theory, the idea that President Obama was not born in the United States. Trump repeatedly pushed the idea in interviews and on social media long after it was disproved. Why doesn't he show his birth certificate? And I have my own theory on Obama. It's one of the greatest scams in the history of politics. But it's not the only conspiracy theory he's indulged. On the campaign trail and in the White House, he's toyed with some outlandish ideas. That Ted Cruz's father might be involved in the Kennedy assassination. His father was with Lee Harvey Oswald. What was he doing with Lee Harvey Oswald right. shortly before the death, before the shooting? Did anybody ever deny that it was the father? They're not saying, oh, that wasn't really my father. It's a little hard to do because it looks like him. That Marco Rubio might not be eligible to run for president, an argument no constitutional scholar supported. Jim You're Hillary. really not so sure that Marco Rubio is eligible to run for president? I don't know. I, I really, I've never looked at it, George. Honestly, I've never looked at it. Uh, somebody said he's not, and I retweeted it. That routine vaccinations cause autism, a theory scientists have long debunked. A child, a beautiful child, went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later got a tremendous fever, got very, very sick, now is autistic. We have extremely well-documented proof that there's no autism associated with vaccinations. That Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia might have been murdered. Scalia, was he murdered? I know it's pretty brutal to say that. It's a horrible topic, but they say they found a pillow on his face, which is a pretty unusual place to find a pillow. Uh, I, I can't tell you what, uh, I can't give you an answer. That Muslims in New Jersey cheered after 9-11, a claim no one has ever substantiated. And I watch in Jersey City, New Jersey, where thousands and thousands of people were cheering. In the other side of New Jersey, where you have large Arab populations, they were cheering as the World Trade Center came down. That millions of Americans voted illegally in 2016, a claim with no factual support. 
Does the president believe that millions voted illegally in this election? He continues to maintain that belief based on studies and evidence that people have presented to him. What evidence do you have? I, 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 as I said, I think the president has believed that for a while based on studies and information he has. That climate change is a hoax. All of this with the global warming and the, that, a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? That Russian meddling in the 2016 election is a hoax. And according to a recent New York Times report, that the Access Hollywood video of him admitting to grabbing women's genitals is a hoax, even though he apologized for it when it came out. I said it. I was wrong, and I apologize. It's not clear how much Trump really believes these ideas. He's backed down from some in the past. Barack Obama was born in the United States, period. Only to indulge them again later. Some of the theories have helped Trump politically by tearing down rivals or creating doubt about policies he opposes. Others have hurt him as polls show voters increasingly question his judgment. But one thing is clear. Donald Trump is not going to stop talking about conspiracy theories.